During the era of dynasties in China, the use of a public examination system was used to determine if students were apt for work in government. This test, known as the Keshu, began in the middle 900s AD, and was only formally abolished 1,000 years later, in the year 1905. This test required the participant to live in a small room for three to five days, and the student was supplied with food, water, and writing utensils. Considered to be legendarily difficult, students would study for years, if not decades, in an attempt to pass. If a student passed within the thin margin at the very top percentile, they'll progress towards further scholarship under the wing of an elder politician, and enter into the vast imperial bureaucracy. The following is a scattering of questions from the test, and although the test changed year to year to discourage cheating, the general theme and subject matter of the questions were always of the same character. Subjects ranged from economics, military strategy, knowledge of literature, history, religion, geography, and diplomacy. Of the tens of thousands of students who volunteered each time the test was issued, merely hundreds would pass with an acceptable grade. The following questions were determined to be dated from the year 1904, the final year before the tests were disbanded by decree of Dowager Sushi. Some of the questions have been slightly adapted from the original source material to be more comprehensible and to add the required context. Part 1. History. The Zhou Dynasty and the Tang Dynasty had weak central governments and strong local governors, while the Qin Dynasty and Wei Dynasty were the opposite, with strong central governments and weak governors. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of both. Question 2. The scholar Jia Yi talked about the three examples and five bait, in which the barbarians admire our culture, so we give them nice food, beautiful clothes, brides, music, palaces with servants, and appeasements to make peace with them. The scholar Ban Gu thought it was a joke, yet Duke Mu of Qin used it to make peace with the Western barbarians, and the scholar Zhang Hongye used it to warn the Zhongnu barbarians on how not to be controlled by China. Discuss why this might not be a bad idea. Question 3. The renowned statesman, Zhang Lang, did not have the heart of legalists such as Shen Buhai and Shang Yang, but used their methods. Prime Minister Wang Angxi used their methods, but did not admire it. Why? Question 4. Governor Pei Du presented the idea that the Prime Minister should be able to discuss plans with sages and advisors in his own home. At the time period of Pei Du, every discussion needed to be done in front of the court, before the Emperor. Why? Question 5. The Northern Song Dynasty allied with the Jurchen people to attack the nations of Yan and Zhao. The Southern Song Dynasty allied with the Mongols to attack the capital of the Jurchen. Which nation's alliance had the correct strategy? Part 2. Politics. Schools exist for three reasons to educate people, to train talented people, and to revitalize industry. Of these, which is the most important? Question 2. Nations of the Far West often have policies that use the name of protection, but always end up gaining benefit. How is it that one can be defending, yet always winning? Use the examples from the past century to prove this point. Question 3. When Japan began its reforms, they employed Westerners, thus they became strong. Now, Egypt has employed more than 1,000 Westerners, but have ended up losing money, power, and remains a weak state. Discuss the reasoning behind this. Question 4. The moral scholar Zhou Li wrote about agricultural policy in the most detail among the hundred schools of thought. The knowledge of our agricultural scholars has served us well in the past. Nowadays, countries do research into new forms of agriculture and focus on men and machines rather than the weather. The basics are land, capital, and labor and only an intelligent person may use them wisely. Now we are going to make agriculture an essential subject. Discuss the ways to teach people agriculture. Question 5. America has used the Chinese Exclusion Act to prohibit Chinese workers within America. Now that 10 years have passed and the expiration date of this act is before us, use international law to rebuke the old treaty and revise it to protect overseas Chinese. Section 3. The Classics. Question 1. What the great learning teaches is to illustrate illustrious virtue, to renovate people, and to rest on its high excellence. Explain this quote. Question 2. He stands erect in the middle, without inclining to either side. How firm is he in his energy? Explain this quote. Question 3. Bringing together all the people, and assembling in one place all their wares, they made their exchanges, and retired, everyone having got what he wanted. Explain this quote. Final section. The Palace Examination. The way of the rulers is to care for their subjects, as fathers care for their sons. Though residing in palaces, they must consider the lives of millions. Only local prefects know the best the pain of the people. In the Han Dynasty, the central government used the Six Laws to supervise the local prefects, but gave them the power to inspect and govern. This is not unlike today. However, we see that local prefects often cheat and lie to the central government. How best can we end this practice? Question 2. 
Chinese society is changing fast, and talents are needed everywhere. Schooling, police, negotiation, and technology. These cannot be managed by people without an education. If we wanted to appoint people with great tasks, we must first broaden their horizons, and this job relies on local officers. Yet, instead of training and examining people, what they have done are often dead letters. The central government asks with sincerity, and they respond with sham. We need good ways to urge them. In the Han Dynasty, all officers were of native people. Should we follow this practice? In the ancient dynasties, servicemen came from peasants. After the Wellfield system and the Gaozhu system ended, conscription started. Was it because the situation changed? Compare the military systems of the Han, Tang, and Song dynasties. What can we learn from them? The power of the military comes from knowledge, and knowledge comes from education. Many countries around the globe become powerful through the acquisition of important technology. Many of their officers know that discipline and physical education begins in childhood. Since we are learning from them, shouldn't we find a deeper reason? Next question. The chapter Tai Zai from the Book of Zhou Li described nine laws to manage the treasury. Does this have any similarity within the budget management of foreign nations? Can you extend their points? Can we reduce the expenditure by reducing extra staff and government spending? And is there a good procedure to do so? We will broaden incomes by adding agricultural, industrial, and commercial departments. Can you devise specific plans to manage them? Final question. How scholars act in the world depends on how they're educated. Scholars would usually become officials and politicians within ancient China. The ancients learned Confucius, and the Han Dynasty valued Confucian class exteriorly, while the Eastern Han valued continency and righteousness over scholarship. In Tang Dynasty writings, poetry became fashionable, and in the Song Dynasty, scholars with great moral character arose. Can people learn goodness by themselves, or do they need great teachers to guide them? Now, as governors, if we want to restrain the spread of evil thought and action around the country, and to encourage Confucian thought, what can we do?